prisoners in their own body. I have, you know, problems doing the, the simplest thing. And the revolutionary surgery that's setting Parkinson's patients free. Now I'm able to function. Plus, the rules of life from Martin Luther King's niece. And then, little by little, it just blew up. The rapper they called Lil Menace. There's no time to slow down. I want to make this. On today's 700 Club. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of the 700 Club. Terry's here with me. I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. If a thief came and said, I want $15,000 of your money, give it to me or I will arrest you, what would you do? Well, I'd have a hard time finding <laughs> that <laughs> cash. <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> would you believe that there are thieves at work taking your money and the cost on, to our nation, $1.9 trillion dollars. We're going to tell you what the thief is, who the thieves are, and where they are located. Well, it's, you know, taxes, taxes, taxes. Critics say the government regulations are becoming so burdensome, they're slowing down the economy. We don't need that. Paul Strand has this look at just how much they cost. Well, you are not worthy to receive these Ten Commandments. When God sent Moses down from the mountaintop, it was with just Ten Commandments. But the federal government obviously thinks we need a lot more, leading Wayne Cruz to call his latest report on their proliferating 10,000 Commandments. So I picked 10,000 Commandments, but now, of course, we've got a lot more than 10,000 Commandments because we've had, we've had 88,000 regulations just in the past decade. Cruz documents all this from his position at the Competitive Enterprise Institute. He says there are more federal regulations on the books than most humans could ever read. The Federal Register this past year was 79,000 pages. Imagine that, 79,000 pages of rules. The costs are real and substantial. Cruz says just look at how Obamacare's dictates are already affecting businesses. It's been all over the news about Obamacare and how companies are either are they're either downsizing, job formation rates are much lower, companies are putting their employees on part-time basis rather than full-time. So regulation is a heavy load. Cruz figures federal regulations cost the economy a whopping $1.9 trillion a year, an eighth of the country's GDP. But let's make it personal. It cost your household almost $15,000 a year. And if you think about the average family income of about 65000 in that neighborhood, it's around 23%. It's, it's the biggest item in the family budget, if you think of it that way, you know, except for housing. You know, it's better, bigger than entertainment, food, you know, everything else. Don't blame Congress. They're too gridlocked to do much regulating. It's the federal agencies spewing them out, some 3,600 regulations in an average year. Last year, there were 51 regulations for every law passed by Congress. And Cruz says the very most expensive kind, what are called economically significant rules, are growing especially fast, 191 last year. That doesn't mean a little bit of money or it, it just might bother you a little bit. An economically significant regulation is one that officially is designated to cost $100 million a year. Many are saying it's time to question whether the benefits of rules and regulations are worth the lost jobs, lost growth, and nearly $2 trillion they shave off the American economy every year. But Cruz warns, as the nanny state grows ever bigger and takes more and more control of Americans' lives, the biggest cost to them may be in things not so easily measured. And one thing that we never measure is loss of liberty. You know, what is the cost of losing our liberties? Paul Strand, CBN News, Washington. Well, you hire somebody and you say you're a regulator. So he says, I've got to regulate something. So maybe I can write up a law. And then he can say, this is my signature law. I think the next president, assuming he's of a different party, should just say they're all canceled. All those regulations just executive order, I cancel them all, start all over again. It is an in, unconscionable drain on our uh, economy. Something I read the other day is kind of uh, cute. The, did you ever, uh, your, your grandmother, anybody, have one of those little uh, uh, amulet things, you know, with the little ivory, you know, a little piece of jewelry with ivory in it, you know, the ones that... Uh, you mean like a little brooch or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. With ivory, you had mm -hmm. one? That's illegal. I know. 
But it's but if it's old, it's okay, right? Well, I mean, you, you got to have a certificate showing that oh, grandmother sorry. purchased it. No, my grandmother did not have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, grandma, keep it. But I mean, this is one I mean, agency. Didn't piano keyboards used to be made out of ivory years ago. Of course, ago. they still are. Ivory and ebony. I mean, it's just it's insanity. <clears throat> but I think this was the. The uh, Fish and Game Administration or food and, is one of those obscure <laughs> agencies. One of those groups. But yeah, one of those groups <laughs> that you don't know anything about. Just put that rule into effect that all the ivory all around, everywhere, this is crazy. That's going to stop evil poachers from coming from Kenya into Uganda and killing elf elephants. Not a chance. Yeah. It's horrible. The only way, you know, when you get to the number that we're talking about mm -hmm. of what exists now, though, the only way to do it is almost to abolish it all and start over. Start because how would you order. even manage that? A president could do that. Executive order, I cancel all executive <clears throat> non-congressional uh, regulations that have been put in effect, period. They're all gone. Then start yeah. from scratch. It would be, it'd be the greatest liberating thing known to man. And but, save us well, some money, it seems. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> They're, they're like uh, termites that are feeding on the, the they get paid by, well, you pay them for this stuff, uh, and termites eat your house. So they live off your house while they're destroying it. These termites live off our house while they are destroying it. And they, they are not helpful. They call themselves public service. They're feeding on the population you and me on the productive sector. Well, in other news, that wonderful woman, that Christian mother who's been sentenced to death in the Sudan, once again has been arrested. They don't want to let her go. Charlene Aaron has that story. That's right, Pat. 27-year-old Miriam Ibrahim is now accused of forging her passport. The passport was issued by the Embassy of South Sudan, and Ibrahim's attorney says the embassy has assured authorities that the passport is genuine. But media reports say she could face a sentence of up to seven years on the latest charges. Ibrahim had been sentenced to death for marrying a Christian and abandoning the Muslim faith. On Monday, a Sudanese appellate court overturned her conviction. U.S. officials are trying to resolve the case so the family can leave the country. But some critics say the Obama administration and the State Department haven't done enough to help Ibrahim and her family. Here at home, Speaker of the House John Boehner is a, considering a lawsuit against President Obama, accusing him of ignoring the law and simply acting on his own. Boehner says Obama is bypassing Congress on certain policies, and he said the president is misusing his executive powers and asserting a, quote, king-like authority. You know, uh, the Constitution uh, uh, makes it clear that the president's job is to faithfully execute the laws. Uh, and in my view, the president has not faithfully executed the laws. White House spokesman John Ernest disagrees with Boehner's actions, saying he doesn't think Americans will support a lawsuit against the president. Pat? Well, it really doesn't matter what the Americans support. It's a question of what the court finds. It's going to be brought in a court. But I tell you, we ought to support uh, John Boehner on this. It is a very courageous act. It's a long overdue. The overreach of this presidency is appalling, <clears throat> just absolutely appalling. They're running all over us, and it's time somebody stopped. And so support Boehner. Pray for him. Send him letters of support. Whatever you do, make him feel like people are with him. Charlene? Congressional investigators say they have found emails that show that former IRS official Lois Lerner once suggested a possible audit of Republican Senator Charles Grassley. Lerner got an invitation to an event by mistake that was meant for Grassley. The event organizer apparently offered to pay for Grassley's wife to attend, and Lerner suggested in email that it might not be right for the group to pay for the senator's wife. So she asked if auditors might look into the matter, although it wasn't clear if she was suggesting an audit of Grassley or the group or both. But another IRS official said no. Grassley says the incident shows why people are worried about political targeting by IRS officials. Pat? I tell you, uh, you talk about, you know, incompetent, devious, and now stupid. I mean, that is stupid. Stupid is forever. And uh, to, she actually targeted Chuck Schumer on the other side. But to get a guy like Chuck Grassley, 
I mean, Mr. Clean, they love him in Iowa. He could run for pope in Iowa and he'd get elected. I mean, the people in Iowa just love him. And <clears throat> the man is squeaky clean. And to say, but, but he didn't even go to that event. He didn't take his wife to the event, but maybe we should audit one of the most powerful senators. Is she crazy? Well, we'll find out sooner or later. They'll get a special prosecutor. She needs to go to jail. Charlene. Police can no longer search the information on your cell phones without a warrant. That's according to a unanimous ruling Wednesday by the Supreme Court. Caitlin Burke reports on the historic case. It's a bold ruling for a digital age. A unanimous Supreme Court ruled that privacy rights apply to 21st century technology, specifically cell phones. Modern cell phones hold for many Americans the privacies of life, wrote Chief Justice Roberts. The fact that technology now allows an individual to carry such information in his hand does not make the information any less worthy of the protection for which the founders fought. This opinion dismisses the government's argument that there's no legal distinction between a smartphone and other physical evidence like a wallet or a dress book that could be found on a suspect during an arrest. It's a huge victory for anyone who values privacy. Warrantless searches of a suspect are often justified by the need to protect officers or to prevent a person from destroying evidence. But Justice Roberts said that digital information can't hurt an officer and police may still take the cell phone, they just can't look at what's on it until they have a warrant. Still, privacy comes at a cost and some investigations will be disrupted or slowed down. The new ruling has no impact on the National Security Agency's data collection programs, but lawyers involved in the case say the justices' opinions signal their interest in the dangers of government overreach. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. General Mills is dropping aspartame from its Yoplait light yogurt. Aspartame is better known by the brand names NutraSweet and Equal. The food company says it's replacing it with another artificial sweetener, sucralose, which is used in Splenda. A General Mills spokesman says the company considered alternatives after hearing from consumers that, quote, they wanted a product that did not contain aspartame. The new cups will say now no aspartame. The FDA says aspartame has been extensively studied, but other groups have raised questions about its safety. Pat? I will immediately go out and buy a carton of Yo Play Light. <laughs> Congratulations. Can I watch? <laughs> yeah. That is tremendous. We've been talking about aspartame. It takes your mind away. It releases it re removes your IQ a number of points. It leaves people in a fog. Uh, we've we've had reports of uh, pilots who were washed out of flying because they were drinking too many diet drinks with aspartame. It is poison. <clears throat> it is the same substance as in white lightning in in that uh, moonshine liquor. It's bad for you. And thank goodness, as one company finally acknowledged, the people are screaming about it. I scream more. If you find this stuff, it's in those little blue packets in a restaurant. Complain. I don't eat this stuff. It takes my mind away. If you're going to serve it, I'm not going to come back here and eat anymore. Let them know. Let your voice be heard. I think we've been screaming about that for years. One company, Yo Play. Are they French? I don't it know. It sounds French. We, we, may we, Monsieur? Ah, uh, c'est bon, Charlene. Well, parents, if you want to cut your children's chances of obesity, cut out the sugars, sugar, sugary juices and sodas at mealtime and replace them instead with water. Health scientists in Britain say people, especially kids and teenagers, get most of their sugar from sweetened drinks. And one scientist said it comes back to simple advice to parents, encourage your children to drink water. And speaking of keeping kids healthy, there are more than 10,000 summer camps in America, everything from soccer camp to computer camp. So how do you find the, the one that fits your child the best? Angela Zadabek shows us where to look for the best camp experience. Summertime is finally here, which means it's time for many parents to plan summer options for their teenagers. As the season arrives, so does the sun, swimming, and camping in the great outdoors. 
Greg Hunter heads up the Christian Camp and Conference Association, which has helped set up and run camps since 1963. So many Christian camps across the country, 850 of them are members of our association, but they come from all denominations, all sizes of camp, different kinds of amenities. Just about any kind of camp you can imagine, they're out there for, for parents and youth leaders looking for a place to go. Triple R Ranch is one of the camps that the association helps serve, offering a variety of outdoor activities. I got to spend the day checking a few of them out. We just have a lot of outdoor activities. We really focus on stuff with the, we have the river with canoeing, the swimming, traditional type camp activities, but the zip lines, team building, we like to work with uh, mission groups, groups that are gonna get up there and get high on the on the zip line and try that out. Of course, horses are a big part of Triple R. We're a Western motif type of ranch here on the East Coast, but we're trying to just, again, get kids out of their comfort zone. And after spending a day in the life of a camper, I could not pass up the vertical challenge to climb the rock wall. And kids today could use the exercise. According to one study, those from age 10 to 16 spend less than 13 minutes a day in physical activity, compared to 10 hours spent each day relatively motionless. Much of that is due to technology. Camp gets them out of their normal environment and allows them to focus on their faith without distractions. This is the most stimulated generation in the history of Earth. And so when, when a kid can unplug from all that and go out into nature and get into temporary community, they can leave behind the things that, that uh, they put pressure on them, that, that kind of bind them up and keep them right where they are. With many options to choose from, faith-based summer camps can be an effective way to help young people awaken their faith, build character, and instill moral values. Angela Zatopek, CBN News. You can find out about different camps and retreats by going to CBNNews.com. And Pat, did you ever go camping when you were a kid? Oh, yeah, sure. You know, I, really, I went to a, a Christian camp, a Baptist-owned camp, a long time ago, and it was a great experience. I also went to a camp where every boy had his own horse, and we went out uh, on midnight rides. And, oh, how fun. And fox hunts and, you know, all <laughs> kinds of things. It, it was great. Rodeos, great. the whole yeah. thing. Uh -huh. it, was, it was tremendous. So. Wow. Camps are very, but boy, oh boy, you, you can you can get beat up pretty badly. You know, they put snakes in your bed and stuff like that. I mean, that, that's part of the <laughs> yeah. camping it's experience. It's the fun of camping experience. That's right. <laughs> Spiders, snakes, rats, all those fun things. Yeah, who wants to miss that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> well, up next, it may not be a cure for Parkinson's, but it's the next best thing. As soon as we turn on the stimulator, they see their hand stop shaking, and it's just... That's the best feeling in the world for them and for me as a surgeon. We'll show you a medical breakthrough when we come back. Some of the rewards of being a parent in an online school is you are right there when the, the student makes a discovery, when they have that aha moment. Want to be more involved in your child's education? With online school programs powered by K-12, you can. Call or click now for your free information kit. K-12 has an award-winning curriculum supported by state-certified teachers designed to help parents be an active participant. I'm like the conductor of the train. I get things organized and set, and then the kids uh, take over from there. K-12 is a public school option, so it's tuition-free. All materials are included, and it's individualized to fit your child's unique abilities and goals. It's a commitment and it, it's, it's something that you, know, you have to embrace if you think that that's the best learning environment for them. 94% of K-12 parents say their student has benefited academically. Call or visit k12.com today for your free information kit. Parents are advocates for their students. They want to do what's best. You just need to be a mom that loves their child. Friday. Code blue, we need the crash card in here. Nine minutes without a pulse. I felt very calm and very peaceful and nine minutes without breathing. I was very aware of the fact that I had just died. A mother who spent nine minutes in eternity. He allowed me to look through his eyes and to see the truth. And came back to share her story. He said, tell them what you can remember. Friday on The 700 Club. Hey, you're watching The 700 Club. We're delighted to have all of you with us. I want to tell you something. This is a breakthrough from the Cleveland Clinic. 
What if you couldn't do the things you take for granted? Like getting out of a chair, buttoning your shirt, or even drinking a cup of coffee. For more than seven million people around the world, such simple things are impossible because of illnesses like Parkinson's disease. You know, Michael J. Fox is the most mm -hmm. notable example. Yeah, he's, he's really brought that. Yeah, but he's come back attention. on. He's on on the air and so forth. But he, he had an enormous career. But our Lori Johnson went to Cleveland Clinic to find a new surgery that apparently can help these people get their lives back. Here's Lori. Even though Nathan Rivera suffers from Parkinson's disease, he can control his body thanks to a pacemaker. It doesn't send electrical signals to his heart, though. They go directly to the part of his brain in charge of motion. We wanted to see how well it works, so Nathan turned it off. You can see almost instantly he begins to shake uncontrollably. Before Nathan got his brain pacemaker, called a deep brain stimulator, he was like many Parkinson's patients, a prisoner in his own body. As a minister, Nathan's violent tremors prevented him and his wife Elizabeth from fulfilling their mission to reach Spanish-speaking citizens around Youngstown, Ohio. Normal activities like walking and getting dressed were nearly impossible. I have, you know, problems doing the, the simplest thing, like bringing my wife a cup of coffee or something. My hand would shake so much, the coffee would spill. I couldn't really eat. Nathan heard about deep brain stimulation performed by neurosurgeon Darlene Lobel at the renowned Cleveland Clinic. It's important to understand that deep brain stimulation is not a cure for Parkinson's disease. It will treat the symptoms. It treats tremor very well. It controls about 90% of tremor, which is impressive. For stiffness and slowness of movement, it controls about 70 to 80% of those symptoms. The effect is durable, which means it lasts over a number of years. And while that sounded great to Nathan, he did not like the idea of staying awake during the surgery. And I said, God, you know, why do I have to go through this operation when you could just touch me and heal me? The operation involved placing sensors in the exact locations of the brain that control motor function. Pinpointing those spots meant Nathan had to follow the surgeon's commands while the doctor worked inside Nathan's brain. Move your right hand, move it to the left. Can you move this? Move your fingers. Don't move, you know, move your, your hand up, move your hand down. Although the idea of being awake during brain surgery sounds unnerving, Dr. Lobel says at least it doesn't hurt. The skin has sensation and can feel pain. But as soon as we put in local anesthetic into the skin, they don't feel anything else for the entire procedure. There's no pain endings in the brain, for example. Nathan had to keep calm. I didn't know what else to think about. I just got to say, I got to concentrate on something. So I'm not concentrating on what's going on because I'm saying this is taking a long time. But it took a long time, and the nurse kept on asking me if I was okay, and she kept on talking to me to try to keep me busy. The surgeon stretches a thin wire from the brain to a generator and planted near the collarbone. When it's all over, a test. And this is the most wonderful part of the surgery. Patients are there in the operating room. We've held their medications, so their tremor is usually pretty severe at that point. As soon as we turn on the stimulator, they see their hand stop shaking. And it's just, that's the best feeling in the world for them and for me as a surgeon. Since there's no cure for Parkinson's, it will continue to attack Nathan's body. But thanks to deep brain stimulation, he can stay one step ahead of the shaking. Because the way I was, I couldn't function. But now I'm able to function. We're in ministry and my wife is evangelism evangelist and we go out and we preach to other churches and why not use this as part of my testimony. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Man, that's wonderful. Mm. You know, uh, they had a, a, a deal some years ago. This wasn't new that they would go into the brain, deep brain, but they would actually kill some cells in there at the time and they would, they would touch these things and, and just deaden them. And that would stop some of the shaking. But this is a, uh, an ongoing uh, uh, 
procedure. I think it's wonderful. And Dr. Lobel, congratulations. Cleveland Clinic is at the forefront of medical innovation, and it, it, it's just a tremendous hospital. Uh, I must say I, they did some things on me that didn't work, but uh, uh, so who am I to complain? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Twice I was there for hard things and it didn't work. Well, that's kind, that is kind of an unpredictable scenario. Well, isn't that's it? right. For I had AFib, but I finally got a, uh, a nice little, little gentleman who's a Christian down in North Carolina who came up with a maze procedure that mm -hmm. coupled with some of this other stuff that seems to have done a good job. Yeah. So I'm still going strong. But you do hear strong. good things about the Cleveland Clinic. And what satisfaction for that surgeon oh, to see man. a patient? But I, I don't know why Michael J. Fox. It's time he, he mm. that that would just set him free. Yeah, he's he's certainly brought attention to I the need for I just attended the funeral research. of a dear mm. dear friend of ours uh, who had Parkinson's for years and got to the point where uh, she couldn't speak. I mean, mm. you you couldn't understand what she was saying and everything. And uh, finally passed on a wonderful Christian person. But uh, it's a horrible disease. Parkinson's is horrible. We, uh, Lori didn't mention her research uh, or ex exploration into this coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it's done some good too. Mm -hmm. But uh, my hats off to the Cleveland Clinic and Dr. Lobel for that uh, creative surgery, mm -hmm. Terry. Well, coming up, a rapper who released an album titled "The World Is Mine" and felt his own world slipping away. The music industry got me stressed out because I wanted money, man. I had to have my four tablets every day or else I would just like start jittering and start freaking out, you know? How this menace found peace in a jail cell. That's next. I use catheters and if you do too, please listen carefully to this life-changing breakthrough. There is a new catheter that hurts less and you can get a free sample by calling this number now. Pain and urinary tract infections have been avoided by many of my patients. These new disposable catheters hurt less. It's an incredible new design that reduces pain. The eyelets are polished, so they glide smoothly and effortlessly across your sensitive skin. The old catheters would scrape and cut, causing pain and infections. These new catheters are totally different, so smooth and painless, they changed my life. Call now and get a free sample. Medicare and your insurance will pay for up to 200 of these catheters per month, all at little or no cost to you. Call now for your free sample, complete with a 90-day supply, and if it doesn't reduce your pain, we'll pick them up for free. Call 800-346-7947. That's 800-346-7947. Call now. This is a special announcement for anyone with joint discomfort who's been disappointed by products that have failed to provide the relief they were seeking. Complimentary samples of a revolutionary joint relief breakthrough called Beneflex are now being made available to the public. The unique Beneflex formula contains a clinically tested, patented ingredient that's so effective, you only need to take one pill daily, just one pill, and you can begin to experience joint relief in as few as seven days. To guarantee your complimentary two-week sample, you must call now, 1-800-940-9258. Again, if you have joint discomfort and have been disappointed by products currently available, complimentary samples of a powerful new quick joint relief formula are being made available to the public. To guarantee your sample, you must call now. Beneflex is available at GNC and Vitamin Shop, but you can only receive your complimentary sample by calling this number, 1-800-940-9258. The mob, the gangs, quick money, sell some drugs and make a lot of money. Johnny Campa says he lived by his own set of rules. And those rules including making as much money as fast as he could by any means necessary. There was just one problem. As soon as Johnny struck it rich, everything else fell apart. It's in LA. Yeah, you wanna hang with us? You wanna bang with us? As a rapper, Johnny Campo was known as Little Menace, and he more than lived up to the name. A lot of theft, armed robbery, getting people's cars stolen, broken into, things like that. Drugs are always in a part of the equation when you're out here. It's the high life, man, you know, and that's, that's what this, this place brings, man. Johnny was raised in South Central Los Angeles. His parents divorced when he was young. 
and I'm an only child, so I just remember just trying to always be like, is this happening because of me, you know? And and uh, really never got a real clarity out of, out of anything from my family, so um, so I was always trying to, to to be a part of something. He lived with his grandmother in a rough area. Before long, Johnny joined a gang and started getting high. The gang gave him the acceptance he craved. I was a member of a neighborhood, and that neighborhood was mine. It was a blood oath. I didn't shy away. I mean, whatever they called me to do, you know, if it was a gunfight that we had to do, we would get into a gunfight. So we were strapped all the time, you know, and we're ready. As a hobby, he also developed skills as a rapper. And when a local producer heard him, that day, I got signed to a label. And it was actually at the label at the time, Familia Records was the label that, for all Chicano rap, for anybody that knows Chicano rap, that was a label back then. That was the hottest label. Little by little, it just blew up. He became known as Lil Menace. By now, he had moved in with his girlfriend, they had a daughter, and he started distancing himself from the gangs. Life was good. We had a big wedding, and now we bought some cars. I moved my family out the hood, and we actually got a nice little pad now in a nice area, and, uh, and then we're traveling around the world, man. As his popularity increased, the stress of the music industry brought on a new habit and new problems. The music industry got me stressed out because I wanted money, man. Started getting some psychiatry because my temper was flaring up and my heart was going, you know, and I was just having all these issues, man. And so they started giving me some medication. Doctors were like, all right, here, take this, here, take this. I had to have my four tablets every day or else I would just like start jittering and start freaking out, you know? My wife was seeing this. She was like, man, honey, you know, you should slow down, you know? And, but I was like, I don't, there's no time to slow down, you know? I, I want it, man. I want to make this. I wanted to be known as the best Chicano rapper that ever lived. Over time, he also distanced himself from his wife, and they separated. One day, Johnny was arrested for gun possession. He called his family for help. Nobody would talk to me. My mom wouldn't answer my phone call. My grandmother wouldn't answer my phone call. My wife didn't want to answer my phone call. Nobody did. I was, I was gone from the outside world. A former gang member told him about how God had given him a second chance at life, but thought he threw it away. Saying, and I had this chance, you know? I, I was dying before God gave me a new life, but then I dumped it all because I went back to my connect. I went back to do, shooting up heroin. And I'm thinking, man, but the way that he said it was such a powerful way, the testimony that he gave. And then he started to cry. And he's like, and I, and I wanted this chance, and I wanted this so bad. Johnny thought about his own life and how he wasted it chasing money and acceptance. The tears are just flying through my eyes, and I'm thinking, what is going on? You know, like, what is going on? Why am I here crying? And this presence, like, man, this, this just, I felt something, you know? Like, I just felt something. And I felt, I felt love. It was God just, just like, just saying, you know, this is who I am, you know? I'm a, I'm a man of second chances and third chances because I was hearing all these chances that this guy had, you know? But man, but I wanted to appreciate these chances now, you know? I don't want to be here in jail for the rest of my life. After Johnny was released on bail, he called a friend's daughter he knew as a Christian. She invited him to church. I remember a man running up there and just giving my life to the Lord because I knew at that time I needed the Lord. Because all that lifestyle that I was living, I was always searching for something, whether searching for love, searching for attention, searching for money, and all I needed all that whole time, it was obvious to me then was, hey, Jesus. In time, he reunited with his wife, who also accepted Christ. They now have three daughters and a strong love for one another. I've learned how to really just give my family, put my family on the pedestal, put them first, you know, and, and have that time and that bonding time with them. Johnny has found his true identity in Christ. Today, he goes back into the same streets that he once terrorized to bring hope to the hopeless through Christ. There's more than that, man. There's a life, man. There's a life in Christ, you know. God wants to take him out of all that bondage and all the oppression that's behind these places, you know. I know God wants to just transform their lives, man, like He did mine, you know? Jesus is my Abba Father. He's my Lord, my Savior. He's, uh, he's everything to me, you know? He's my, my beginning and my end. He's the, the author, the Alpha and the Omega, you know? He's a finisher of my faith, man, and I really believe that. 
Everybody's searching. Johnny was searching. He was searching. He wanted acceptance. He wanted fame. He wanted money. He wanted pleasure. A lot of times you think, well, if I shoot something in my veins or take a pill or smoke something, that it'll give me pleasure. And the Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season, but it doesn't last very long. And then you're down and you're crying out, what's next? Fortunately, with Johnny, he turned to the one who has the answer because really, when you're seeking, the one thing that we all look for is acceptance with our Heavenly Father. We all are looking for the love of God. Acceptance with God, peace with God, because He made us and there's a pull that draws us back to Him. And what he says is, come home. I will forgive you. And you say, oh, no, 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 no. You don't understand. You don't know what I've done. And God says, yes, I know exactly what you've done. I know exactly where you've been. I know everything you've done, who you've hurt, who, how you've hurt yourself. I know all about it. And I'm still willing to forgive you. All I ask you to do is to reach out and take my forgiveness. Take the offer of forgiveness, which is in Jesus Christ. Now, if you want that, do what Johnny did. He rushed to the altar and said, Lord, I want you. And if you want him right now, I want you to pray with me these words. Don't go anywhere right now. Bow your head. Pray these words. Mean them in your heart. Jesus, that's right. Pray with me. Jesus, you know me. You know what I've done. You know who I am. And so I come to you without any plea, without any righteousness. I come to you as a sinner. And I say, Lord, I know you died for sinners and you died for me. So come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and I'll live for you and I'll serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. And thank you for coming into my heart. Now, for those who prayed with me, I want to pray for you right now, real quick, just this moment. Father, fill them with the Holy Spirit. Let them see the reality of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you prayed with me, I want to give you something. I want you to get started and get underway. I, I did a little compact disc, disc a few years ago. It's about 73 minutes of audio. It talks about the exchange life, what it means to have your sins forgiven, what it means to be a new creature in Christ. What if you sin? What happens next? What do you do? What about the second coming of Jesus? What about the baptism of the Spirit? It's all here. I'll give this to you free if you'll call us. There's no obligation. If you don't want that, don't give us your name, but call anyhow and say, look, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord. It's 1-800-759-0-0. 700. It's the most important decision you've ever made in all your life. Here's Terry. Well, still ahead, we're going to sit down with the niece of Martin Luther King. But first, Pat's going to bring it on with your email. Elaine says, my daughter wants to be a missionary. What does the Bible say about women in ministry? We'll answer that question and more when we come back. Hello friends, Wink Martindale here for 1-800-MEDIGAP, America's trusted source for Medicare supplemental insurance. You know, it's fun to take chances if you're on a game show, but in the real world, if you're turning 65 or already have Medicare Part A and Part B, call 1-800-MEDIGAP. My friends at 1-800-MEDIGAP can help protect you and save you money on Medicare supplemental insurance. Don't take a chance. Tell them Wink sent you when you call 1-800-MEDIGAP today. Welcome back to the 700 Club. A federal appeals court has ruled for the first time that states cannot prevent same-sex couples from getting married. The three-judge panel in Denver on the 10th Circuit ruled two to one in favor of gay marriage, striking down Utah's ban on it and saying same-sex marriage does not undermine traditional marriage. The ruling is on hold while it's on appeal. Another deadly terrorist attack in Nigeria today. 21 people are dead and 17 wounded in a bombing at a shopping mall in the country's capital, Abuja. 
It is the latest in a series of violent attacks blamed on Islamic terrorists. Two separate explosions in April killed more than 120 people and wounded about 200 at a busy bus station in Abuja. Both attacks were claimed by Boko Haram, which has threatened further attacks. More than 2,000 people have been killed in Boko Haram attacks this year. And you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at cbnnews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Even though Instaflex is now the number one selling joint supplement at GNC, there are still too many people suffering with joint discomfort who haven't experienced the Instaflex difference. So now the makers of Instaflex are on a mission to give out as many complimentary two-week samples of Instaflex as we can in the next 24 hours. These complimentary samples are not available in stores. And to guarantee your sample, you must call now, 1-800-963-0946. Instaflex is number one at GNC because it's our most powerful joint relief formula ever. In a clinical study at a major university, Instaflex was shown to significantly reduce joint discomfort. Experience the difference now with your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and these fine retailers, but you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-963-0946. We want to give out as many complimentary Instaflex samples as we can in the next 24 hours, so call and guarantee yours now. 1-800-963-0946. The American Bible Challenge is back. All new tonight, Jeff Foxworthy is ready to play. The whole family's gonna love it. Kurt Franklin's gonna sway. Are you ready? And you'll see the Bible in a whole new way. Don't I look chic? That was impressive. The American Bible Challenge, all new tonight, 8, 7 central, only on Game Show Network. Well, if you think you're smarter than a fifth grader when it comes to Bible trivia, you should try your hand on the show America's Bible Challenge. Here's a clip from tonight's episode. Which housewife flipped out on a road trip with her husband and went after her son with a knife? Marge Simpson, Zipporah, Esther, or Martha? You can answer that question and more during an all-new episode. That's tonight. If you want to watch, tune in to the Game Show Network at 8. That's 7 Central Time. Looks like it's going to be a fun time. Yeah, that's become the most popular show on the Game Show Network. It's very popular. Fun. Yeah, it's fun. fun. Yeah. Well, speaking okay. of fun, we've got right. some questions for Let's you, some it. inbox questions for Bring It On. The first one, Pat, comes from Mark, who says, is it okay to eat bacon? Uh, are you asking biblically? Are you asking from a health <laughs> point? Uh, as far as health, they cure it in nitrites. If you have some that didn't cure it in nitrites, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, in terms of the Bible, uh, there was a prohibition against eating pork. Pork uncured had trichinosis. Pigs were uh, unclean animals and so forth. But those, those dietary restrictions don't apply today. So. I think... Uh, so it's more finding the one that doesn't have the nitrates in yeah, it. Yeah, well, the, the health issue. thing has to do with, you know, is it good for your health or not? Mm -hmm. But other than that, it, you know, we're no longer under those dietary laws. All right. Okay, this is Elaine who says, My teenage daughter studies her Bible and is considering missionary work in nursing as a career someday. Please help us understand 1 Corinthians 14, 34 through 37 and 1 Timothy 2, 12 about women in ministry. She has come to me with questions about how this relates to women in the ministry today, and I'd like your advice. Look, I've gotten in controversy <clears throat> on that one a long time ago. Uh, the Bible says, I would not uh, permit a woman to teach or be an authority over men. That's what the Apostle Paul said. But at the same time, there were godly women in the church. Uh, there were the deaconesses in the church. Uh, they, they were uh, there. And you go back in the ministry of Jesus, and there were wealthy women who gave of their substance to keep him going. I mean, they were the, the, the funding source for the <coughs> Lord Jesus himself. Uh, I said the source, the source was God, but I mean, they, they were the instrument. Uh, godly women, what would we do in the church without the women? Uh, you know, there would be no church without the mm -hmm. women. Uh, but so there have been godly people, but the idea is that uh, to put a woman over a man, in terms of the Bible teaching, it's, it's, uh, was, well, the Apostle Paul said it wasn't a good thing. 
Uh, but on the mission field, there are many women who do wonderful things. There are a lot things. of women pastors, too, who yeah, are Yeah, I know. Very... And many of them disagreed with me a few years ago when I quoted the Apostle Paul. So I, I don't want to get into all that. I really don't, because it's still controversial. But <laughs> if your daughter is called of God, then let her fulfill the calling that God well, and has... And missionary called. work in nursing wouldn't be something that would... No, put of her course in a not. position. I mean, of you know, Florence Nightingale all the way down the line. I mean, these wonderful um, ladies have have been agents of healing and blessing forever and ever. And uh, we we just showed a woman who's a brilliant neurosurgeon at the mm -hmm. Cleveland Clinic. I mean, you impacting gonna, people's lives yeah, dramatically. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, what women the contribution is just extraordinary. So. Let the daughter follow what God shows her to do, and don't worry about what Paul said. I think our current uh, feeling is that uh, uh, you know women are are free; they're they're equal partners in the Lord. All right. This is Olivia, who says, "Dear Pat, my friend in high school has told me that she's tried witchcraft and has used it to get an A on her test, which she didn't really deserve. I've shared something with her about my past struggle, and she opened up and confessed that she had an abortion. We both promised to keep these things just between us. Should I still hang out with her, even though she does witchcraft?" Um, I think she's opening up to you, and I think you need to. <clears throat> Lead her to the Lord. She needs to be set free. But whatever you do, don't get into witchcraft. Don't start seances. Don't let her say, "Well, look, I, let me read your fortune. Here's some tarot cards or something." Don't, don't don't get into that. There's a question: Is can you be the instrument of blessing for her, or is she going to be an instrument of pulling you down? Mm -hmm. And I, I can't answer that. But uh, it sounds like this woman is open to hearing more about the Lord. This is Jock who says, in the Old Testament, men had many wives, and it seems like it didn't go against God. Where does it say in the Bible that man should have only one wife? Hey, I mean, go to Utah and have many, many. <laughs> go to Saudi Arabia, you can have four. And if you don't like the ones you've got, you say, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you three times, and you can go get another one. Really? And that's simple. if you're going to hook up with a prostitute, uh, you marry her, and then as soon as the liaison is over, you say, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, and uh, you're free to go do it again. Mm. That's a pretty convenient religion, isn't it? I would say. All right. Wh what about it? The Bible says, as far as the elders, he should be the husband of one wife. It says it in the Bible. That's New Testament. Uh, mm -hmm. Go back in the, in the uh, book of Genesis. For this cause shall a man leave his father and love, uh, mother and cleave to his wife, singular, and mm -hmm. the twain shall be one flesh. Yeah. That's the biblical order. But <clears throat> somehow those kings, I mean, Solomon had... 300 wives, 700 concubines. How did he have time for all that? Yeah, well, some of it was just a collection, I think. <laughs> you reckon? I reckon. <laughs> well, Nobody'd want to contend with that. <laughs> nobody's got the strength? No. <laughs> man, he'd take a lot of vitamins for that poor old man. He, <laughs> no wonder he went astray. All right, so much for that. But uh, I tell you what, though, I, I said when they make these rulings that they're making about homosexuality, when they're making these rulings about uh, other sexual practices, it won't be long before they cancel the laws forbidding bigamy. You know that has to be because, mm -hmm. I mean, if after all, if uh, um, the polyamory, if, if people love each other, uh, according to the Supreme Court, then they're adults and they could express their love any way they want to. So laws against bigamy, it was said uh, by Rick Simtorum, I believe, in the United States Senate. Surely enough, those laws will come down, and surely enough, well, they will. Well, once you change the definition. Every, everything goes. Yeah. Okay, but I, elders, husband of one wife. That's what the Bible says. Okay. Well, what does it take to be an influential leader? Here are the rules that turned a young minister into a national icon. That's next. The water from this well is very dirty. I often see frogs, snake skin, and garbage in it, but we use it for everything. I don't want to drink the water from the well, but I have no choice. I got hurt when I fell. I was very scared. After that, I was afraid to fall in again. I prayed that God would make another way for us to get water. 
Thank you, CBN. I don't have to be afraid to get water anymore. These are the things you make possible when you partner with CBN. Thousands of people around the world begin new lives because you cared enough to give. To those of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club, thank you. Your help will make a tremendous difference in so many lives. Be sure to watch for this mailing and remember to send in your pledge. Because when we all come together to help, miracles happen. Friday. Code blue, we need the crash card in here. Nine minutes without a pulse. I felt very calm and very peaceful. And nine minutes without breathing. I was very aware of the fact that I had just died. A mother who spent nine minutes in eternity. He allowed me to look through his eyes and to see the truth and came back to share her story. He said, tell them what you can remember. Friday on The 700 Club. Martin Luther King was just 39 years old when he died. During his short life, he worked to end America's long history of injustice. How did he do it? Well, according to his niece, by following the rules. Alveda King has seen her share of tragedies. From the assassination of her uncle, Martin Luther King Jr., to the untimely death of her father. But she's also witnessed great triumph, such as the passing of the Civil Rights Act. Through all of life's trials and victories, Alveda and her family learned timeless truths that enabled them to bring about revolutionary change. In her new book, King Rules, Alveda shares those core values that guided the King family that will help you, your family, and our nation to prosper. Alveda King is here with us now, and we welcome you back to the Seven Hundred Club. Hello, Terry. It's so good to be here. It's a great treat to see you Thank again. Thank you. I, I want to talk a little bit about. Well, your book is called King Rules, but uh, the the rules that Martin lived by really were not just his. They were from a long line of King Rules. Talk about that. Absolutely, and you'll see in our family tree seven generations. That family yeah. tree I looked at and went, oh my goodness, I've never seen a tree this big. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> well, it's at kingrulesbook.com. Nelson Books has uh, put uh, so many pictures there. And we wanted you to know that Martin Luther King Jr. was not born in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. He came from generations of godly people, yeah. uh, imperfect people who served a perfect God. Yes, yes. You talk about one of the first rules that you say is to make home a priority and I thought boy as the world gets faster and faster and faster you know we sometimes get our priorities out of order but that's a significant one and it's been significant for your family talk about that well the importance of home I remember it from being a little girl mm -hmm. and uh, I remember the birth home where Martin Luther King Jr. was born my daddy A.D. King and Christine their sister and uh, there were so many rules at home and I know that the audience would love to hear this at home Daddy, after Jesus was king, the father was the head of the household. And then there was Mama King and the children, and they obeyed <laughs> rules. Now, this is a real funny story, but it's true. Daddy King, they would hold dinner until he came home, if he was in town. And when he got there, everybody had to do a Bible verse. Wow. Now, the boys may be hungry because they were waiting for Daddy to get home, so they would say, Jesus wept. And then Daddy <laughs> King would say... <laughs> That is in the Bible. It's the shortest verse. Why did he weep? And then it made dinner longer because they had to have a Bible lesson before dinner. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. You also say one of the other rules that you have is work for peace. Not a surprise to people because I think that's Martin's legacy, really, is that we should all be working for peace. But talk a little bit about the things you share regarding that. Well, you'll notice in the book that there are scriptures to support all of those positions. And so we were looking for the peace that passes all understanding, yeah. the peace that Jesus leaves, the peace that causes men and women, no matter what their ethnic group is or <clears throat> economic status is, mm -hmm. to love each other. Yeah. And we believe, and it's, it's a king rule, if you love and regard your fellow human being, then there will be peace because you will respond even to wrongs with mm -hmm. love. Yeah. And that's really where you get peace. Yeah, the even to wrongs 
is huge, isn't it? It is so very huge. And in the 20th century, of course, we were still dealing with skin color and racism. Mm -hmm. And there are so many issues now for all people from conception until natural death. And people yeah. say, well, here she goes with pro-life. No, the baby in the womb, of course. Mm -hmm. But once the baby is born and becomes a teenager and an adult and then a mature person and an old person. Now, I'm 64 now. And I've always said, never mistreat old people. Yeah. But now that I'm 64, it's getting more important, never isn't it? <laughs> mistreat old people. <laughs> it's getting more important never. to me, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I want you to talk about life. The last time you and I were together, we were uh, at, at a local gathering here that was all about life. And, yes. and one of the rules is defend life. I yes. know that you are pro-life. Uh, you say that, you know, Dr. King was pro-life even though he once received an award from Planned Parenthood, but there was a strong belief there in the value of life. Well, Daddy King, my granddaddy, Martin A.D.'s and Christine's daddy, my mother wanted to have a, a procedure uh, to not have me in 1950. Abortion mm -hmm. was illegal, but you could just go to the doctor and say, my stomach hurts, and he could explore, yeah. and then you'd come away with everything that was there not there. And he says, Nene, you can't abort that baby. She's a little girl with bright skin and bright red hair. I saw her in a dream three years ago. Prophetically, wow. no ultrasound. He Ooh. saw me three years before I was born. And then in the 70s, I thought about aborting another child, and I told granddaddy. He says, no, that's my great-grandchild. That's not a lump of flesh. Yeah. No. So life is important in our family. And, and so we defend all life, but really, not just the babies, mm -hmm. the hungry. And there's a book about the needy. You know, you defend and stand up for everybody. Yeah. What was it in your own life that changed things for you? You know, you went through struggles yourself and, and even coming up to a place where you considering a, were considering an abortion at a point of need in your life. Was it the family rules that finally brought you down the road to a tight relationship with God? It was the family rules that brought me back. The word of my grandfather, in 1983, I accepted Jesus as my Lord, not granddaddy's God, not daddy's God, but my mm -hmm. God, Jesus as my Savior. And in 1983, my life changed. And finally, I ended up as African American Director of African American Outreach with Priest for Life many years later. Wow. Wow. When you were writing this book, um, I'm sure, first of all, it brought back many memories, but I'm sure it also caused you to think a great deal about our culture today. What do you want people to take away from this? Well, I want to say it's so important that that's a Thomas Nelson book, the history mm -hmm. of how many Bibles Thomas Nelson got into the hands of people. That meant a lot that a Bible company would take the king rules, and there's a scripture, may the king's rule be as refreshing as the rain. It's in the beginning yeah. of the book. I'm not talking about the human king family, yeah. the king of kings and the Lord mm -hmm. of lords. And so to just know that no matter what we're doing in life, we all are imperfect without Christ. There are 10 rules that can help us to get back to God. Yeah. And you will enjoy reading about all of them because the rules matter and so did the stories surrounding them. If you'd like to know more about King Rules, read Alveda's book. This is available in stores nationwide. And Alveda, we thank you for being with us today and for the message you bring. Thank it's you great so to much. See you again. It's good to see you the too. Lord bless you. Pat? Fascinating. Thank you. We leave you today with this power minute from Psalm 145. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear Him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love Him. Well, that's all the time we've got. Tomorrow, we'll go on a journey with a woman who spent nine minutes in heaven. Man, I want to hear what she's got to say, don't you? That's Fridays on the 700 Club. See you then. Bye-bye. Friday. Code blue, we need the crash card in here. Nine minutes without a pulse. I felt very calm and very peaceful. And nine minutes without breathing. I was very aware of the fact that I had just died. A mother who spent nine minutes in eternity. He allowed me to look through his eyes and to see the truth. And came back to share her story. He said, tell them what you can remember. Friday on The 700 Club. Hi, this is Pat Robertson. 
this is an important time in the history of America. It's an important time in the history of CBN. And what you do is so very important now. But we've got to get the gospel out here in America. We've got to help the poor and the needy, feed those who are hungry, clothe those who are naked, bring medical attention to those who are suffering, and more than anything, bring hope to those who are without hope throughout the world. So your 700 Club membership makes a huge difference. And I ask you to go to your phone and call. If you haven't already called in, we appreciate what you've done so much. So don't slack. We don't want our hands to be empty. We want to say, Lord, here are those who have come to you because of my labors. Telephones are available, toll free line. And we just thank God for each one of you. So don't hesitate to call and do it now.